Hello everyone and welcome back to Joe's DIY. Back again with another video. Today we're going to be unboxing this OSSC that I received in the mail. Uh, I ordered this a couple of months ago. I haven't gotten a chance to open it yet. And we're going to take a look at what's inside and we're also going to see how well it matches up with the Hyperkin HDMI cables and the pound cables. I have uh, several different sets. I know that I have one for the Sega Saturn, one for the Sega Dreamcast, and one for the Sega Genesis slash 32X slash uh, Sega CD. So we're gonna find out how well they match up here in Joel's DIY. So for the last couple of years, I've been hearing a lot about the OSSC and I wanted to buy one in hopes to get the best possible picture on my retro gaming setup. Uh, I was hoping that the price would go down so that it would be worth it for to me uh, because I've already bought the uh, Hyperkin and Pound HDMI cables for my Sega Dreamcast as well as for the Sega Saturn and also for my Sega Genesis 32X Sega CD. Uh, my main reason for making this video today is not only to demo the OSSC, but to also be able to make a comparison with these cables, uh, meaning the Pound and the Hyperkin. Uh, I've heard through a lot of reviews on YouTube by several different gaming channels that these cables are pretty bad and they're not as good as what you can get with the OSSC. Uh, if you don't know me, if you don't know me by now, uh, if you're not seeing my channel before, I'm not a big fan of overspending on accessories that only minimally increase the quality of whatever you're gaming on. Uh, I would prefer to mo spend my money to pay for some good games or whatever can give you more bang for your buck, like for example, uh, an EverDrive. Um, but the, what I paid was pretty reasonable. Uh, it was $120 to pick up this OSSC. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, start opening it up. This came in a simple simple package. I mean, it's not anything that's name brand or anything, so there's no special packaging. Um, and I pulled it out and it was, you know, bubble wrapped and stuff. So, and uh, at, actually I, I, I snuck in early and I put this in here just because I knew that I was gonna need an HDMI cable for the OSSC. So this is kind of like a little foam pad here. You get your instructions here, uh, open source scan converter. So it's a nice manual, nice uh, thickness, uh, color pages here. Kind of shows you all the different inputs. And uh, this one comes with the remote control. So lots of options here with the OSSC and uh, yeah. It definitely mentions uh, firmware updates and I'll be updating this uh, as soon as I'm uh, able to set this up and um, we'll have the, the most updated firmware. Um, comes with a remote still in the sealed. I haven't opened it yet. So let's get that open here. Not sure if this comes with Nope, no batteries here. Maybe we might have some batteries somewhere in the package. But a nice quality remote control here. And then you got different uh, different plugs for the different uh, regions. You got like the your European plug. I think this is what it is, Australian plug. So yeah, um, of course I'm in North America, so. I will be using this one to power it up. And here's the power supply. And in case you were wondering, this is a, a five, uh, five volt, two amp amps for this power supply. I'm gonna just go ahead and slide this in now. And I like that they gave you different options. Um, and here is the OSSC comes in an anti-static bag. So 
So this is the front. I have to admit, it does look a little bit DIY, how it's put together, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's solid. It's not very flimsy or cheaply made. You got your switch for on and off. You got uh, different, uh, I guess this is an input or two inputs. So not sure. This is probably for the SCART. You got your AV, uh, AV1, AV2, AV2, but this is the component. This is the VGA, which I'll be using with the uh, Sega Dreamcast. I'm not sure if those are dials or not. I'm not gonna mess with those quite yet. And you do have your little SD card port to up, update it. So I am gonna update the firmware before I demo this. But yeah, first impressions are uh, pretty solidly built. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, set this up and uh, we'll be right back. Right now I have it uh, set up to my uh, my Roxio uh, GameCap HD Pro. Uh, this has both a HDMI and a component uh, input. So I was also able to test uh, PS2 uh, running on this, which I'll demo uh, shortly, just to try to test out the component input on the OSSC. The display, it has firmware 0.88A. So I will be looking something up online to see if we can get a more up-to-date firmware. I know that the 0.89 was out, uh, but I want to make sure that I'm getting the right firmware before I continue on with this. But so far, uh, when you turn it on, you just get this simple, simple display kind of showing you the spectrum of different, uh, I guess, uh, tones of color. Okay, so after some fiddling around, I was finally able to get this upgraded. Um, I had to order a two gigabyte uh, SD card or micro SD card to get this uh, upgraded to the newest firmware. So just bear that in mind that if you have a bigger SD card, you're gonna have to get a smaller one uh, just for compatib compatibility. Um, but as you can see, it's, I got 9.0. That's the newest firmware up to now. Um, and the nice thing about it too, is I was able to uh, updated with a couple of uh, custom um, profiles uh, for different consoles, but we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna go ahead and stick to the default. So as you can see on the screen, I have this set to default as far as profiles. Uh, we're gonna be doing all the consoles through that and we'll be able to see uh, the quality of those regular HDMI cables versus this more expensive uh, OSSC and We'll get a good comparison because we got a side by side uh, which will be a lot helpful to kind of see the differences uh, so without further ado let's go ahead and get started with that
now that you've had a chance to see for yourself the differences between the OSSC and those cheaper HDMI cables, here are my final thoughts. I kind of wanted to go over it point by point uh, just so that it's easier to understand my rationale. Uh, first, the positives. Um, with the OSSC, you, get, you do get a lot of options. I mean, you've got scan lines, which the HDMI cables do not provide. Uh, you have got options for uh, other things that I haven't even actually figured out yet. Um, and also, uh, you know, you, you're able to change um, resolutions and, you know, completely customize uh, a profile to every uh, game console, which is kind of nice. Uh, you do have an all-in-one solution. Uh, from what you can see, um, you know, this thing has different ports for all your game consoles and obviously this the first thing that comes to mind is now you have a way to hook up a VGA signal from your Dreamcast straight into the OSSC as well as component and SCART. Um, it would, would have been nice for them to give you an alternative uh, audio input for SCART uh, so you might have a problem if you're running a Model 1 and you don't have the cable that sticks into the stereo um, I'm talking about the Model 1 Genesis. Uh, for this to get any sound, you're going to have to use a Model 2 uh, if you're using SCART, a SCART signal. So that's one setback. But sticking to the positives, it does have all the ports that you would actually need uh, for several game consoles that you might own. Um, and it's, like I said, uh, it is also fully customizable. I mean, you, you can download any profile for any console that you'd like. Uh, that's actually a really nice thing for for the OSSE. Um, it's a nice thing for it to have a remote. Uh, most of the time, when I do get one of these SCART boxes or you know an HDMI to SCART, there's no way to uh, change the settings uh, without you having to get up and you know uh, pressing a button or switching a switch. So it is nice that it comes with a remote that you allows you to change the settings on the fly. And I think in the long run, uh, it's definitely cheaper to own one of these because if I do the math, I, I have bought three of these types of cables, the HDMI cables, each of them $30 a pop. So we're talking about $90 plus tax, which almost comes close to whatever the this costs. So it's probably in, just a, a, in the long run, a, a better choice to just buy the OSSC uh, just so that you can have an all-in-one solution. So switching over to the negatives, um, owning an OSSC can go from a very easy thing to just plug in a couple of inputs and have the default running to a very complicated process where you're trying to adjust uh, every little thing. The advantage is that there are people out there that have created profiles for you know the Genesis and for the Dreamcast and uh, the PS1 and Nintendo RGB and so forth. Um, but if you were to try to come up with your own profiles, I mean, it could take you days to, you know, uh, adjust every every little thing that you'd like to adjust on this. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend that. I think it's easier just to download the profiles. The profiles are all over the internet, so you just have to do a Google search, and you should be able to find those profiles. But it could be very complicated to manage this thing. Um, the design on it, to my honest opinion, does need a little bit of work. Um, I was kind of concerned when I was using the, the SCART cable that this thing, it's not very solid. Um, it moves quite a bit, actually. It wiggles a little bit. I was looking at the uh, at the connectors at the bottom to make sure that they weren't loose. Uh, you know, I, even though I didn't put a lot of force into this connector, uh, I do feel that uh, it's a little bit flimsy. Um, and then, you know, it kind of also bothers me that the board is actually exposed. And if you look at these areas right here, you know, is exposed to the elements basically so you have to be really careful make sure you making sure you don't spill anything and you keep this in a in a, in a dry place uh, so the design I think could use a little bit more work um, and then um, when I downloaded some of the profiles that are online they did not work on my uh, specific monitor now I, that could be just my monitor I mean you could probably try it on a different monitor a more modern monitor it might work a lot better but some of the resolutions might not might not work, which leads you to the other problem where it's very difficult to switch back to the default profile uh, unless you know exactly what to do. Um, there is a button on the remote that allows you to 
uh, go back to the original profile of default. But if you don't know, you know what to press, it can be very difficult uh, because once you click into that profile, it doesn't work. Your screen completely goes black, and you and you are not able to uh, mess with the menu because the menu will not come up on the screen. So that's kind of like a huge negative on that. Um, Another thing too is that unfortunately this remote uh, stopped working for me after the second day of testing this thing out. Um, you know, it's receiving a signal from the remote, it just won't do anything. And quite honestly, this project would have been DOA had I not figured out that I could use one of these, um, one of these Logitech uh, universal remotes. Uh, this is the Harmony one. And this remote kind of saved this whole project because I was able to find profiles online that were compatible with this OSSE and I was able to uh, figure out a way to you know push a button so that I can make the menu come on and I can make adjustments uh, but this remote basically died on me on the second day of testing this thing so definitely the faulty remote it's a crapshoot I don't know if this happens to a lot of people but it definitely affected you know my testing out of the OSSE but this this remote here saved you know this project basically from being dead on arrival um, the other thing too uh, that I wouldn't call a huge thing uh, but to me it was kind of a problem that I had to actually order a 2 gigabyte uh, micro SD um, I had to do it just for being able to upgrade the firmware uh, I wish that they would just send one with this so that you can uh, you know upgrade it I'm sure it wouldn't cost more than a couple of bucks more um, but Definitely, if you don't have that two gigabyte SD card, you're not able to use anything bigger with this. So you might have to uh, order specialized order that one. So that's kind of a problem. And the last thing that I'm going to say uh, as a negative is that this is not like an official product that a, a company makes. This is basically open source, meaning that anyone could program this thing, and you know it almost kind of looks like a homebrew device. Um, and there are a lot of people uploading stuff on it, but when I was trying to sh troubleshoot the remote problem, uh, there was no way of me figuring out if you could reprogram this thing. So, you know, I think the support isn't there because it's just not like an official thing, I think. Um, maybe the Reto Tink is, I'm not sure. Uh, but definitely, you know, the support is not all, not as good as you wish it could be. And I think it's just because this is, this is open source. So, uh, so that would be another negative weighing on this thing. Overall, I think I would definitely recommend uh, you picking this up uh, because I think the positives definitely uh, help in many ways, you know, the all-in-one solution. Um, if you could get a remote that works, you know, it definitely makes it more convenient to switch through your, your retro consoles. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of options here. I mean, you, you're going to have to do a little bit of uh, studying and digging and figuring it out, but, you know, once you do, I mean, this is a great device to be able to use uh, scan lines and to be able to do customized resolution. So I would definitely recommend it. Nonetheless, thank you so much for watching today. I hope that this uh, video was helpful in helping you decide if you want to pick up an OSSE. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.